Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Java Graphics. Today we're going to be animating shapes. Now in the prior video we showed you how to draw rectangles and circles and text. Today we're going to show you how to actually make those things move. Now if you missed any of the prior videos I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can catch up on anything you may have missed. Let's head over to NetBeans and start making these shapes move. If you want to learn Java programming or just programming in general subscribe to this channel. We put out a lot of videos that range from beginner topics to more advanced programming concepts. Also, please like this video, share it with a friend, and write a comment as well. It goes a long way to help promote a channel like this. Now, let's get back to the video. So here we are in NetBeans, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and animate this circle or oval. So let's get rid of all the unnecessary code here. So let's get rid of the text and we'll get rid of our rectangle because we don't need it. We'll put it back later when we want it. Now, when we want to make this circle move, we're going to kind of think of it as a ball. Now, in object-oriented programming, everything in our game or program really should be an object or a class. So we don't want to actually draw the circle or the oval here in our main class, Java Graphics Tutorial. We want to create a separate class. So let's create a class called Ball. So as you can see, I've created a class called Ball. The first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to create some variables that are going to keep track of the xy coordinate of our ball. And we're going to initialize these in the constructor. So now we have our ball and when we create it we're going to pass in the position of where it's supposed to be. Now let's just say every ball is going to have the same diameter. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to go back to our main driver, our main class, and instead of actually drawing the ball here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to let the ball handle its own affairs. We're going to let the ball draw itself. So we're going to first instantiate a copy of our ball in our constructor for the main program. So after we set up all of our frame, all of our GUI stuff, we're going to we're going to create a variable called ball and we're going to say ball equals new ball and we're going to pass in, let's pass in 700 comma 300 and there we go. Of course we need to declare this variable, that's an instance variable, let's declare it up here. And now that we have our variable ball, instead of drawing the ball here, what we're going to do is we're going to say ball dot draw self. We're going to tell the ball to draw itself. Now we need to declare this method. We need to create the method on the class ball, but we also need something else. Whenever the ball draws itself, remember we need this graphics object. So we have to pass this in to the ball so it knows how to draw itself. Let's go over to the ball class and let's create our method. And remember that this method is going to accept a graphics object as a parameter. Of course, we need an import. And what are we going to do inside of our draw self method? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the color. So we set the color to yellow. Of course, we need an import statement here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our oval. And when we draw our oval, we're going to pass in the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, the width and the height. The width and the height is going to be the same. It's going to be diameter because we want this to be a perfect circle. So we pass in the same value twice. Now let's head back to our main class. And as you can see, this is no longer underlined in red because we've declared this variable, this uh, method, excuse me. And now when we run our method, every time we call paint component, it's going to call this method, which basically tells the ball to draw itself. So let's run this and see how it works. And there is your ball. Perfect. Well, almost perfect. There's one slight problem here, and it's a very subtle problem. The issue is that here's our constructor. This code is running. But as this code is running, we're also running this thread. It's happening simultaneously. 
which means this loop method is being called at the same time that our constructor is running. Now, if that happens, the loop method is calling repaint, which is telling Java to repaint the frame, which means it's going to call this method. It's going to tell the ball to draw itself. The problem is that this is all happening very quickly, and it's happening at the same time that all of this is happening, which means that it's possible that this object, this ball object, may not have been created yet. There's no guarantees because the code is running at the same time that this piece of code will run before this piece of code. It's possible, but it may not happen. This may run first, and if it does, we're going to end up getting an error. Now, how do we fix that error? All we have to do is check to make sure that this ball object has already been created. So we're going to wrap it in an if statement, then we're going to say if ball is not equal to null, then we'll draw the ball. So what happens if this comes first, this will be true, and we will draw the ball. What happens if this does not come first? If this comes first, ball will be null, we'll skip this, and we won't draw the ball. And then when this finally gets done, remember, this part is happening 60 times a second. So when this piece finally gets done, eventually this will be a true statement and we will then continue to draw the ball from then on. So now let's try and move the ball. So here we are in the main class. Now let's think about what's happening before we actually try and move the ball. 60 times a second, this method gets called. What does this method do? it calls repaint, which tells the ball to redraw itself. Now, all we need to do in order to move the ball is have the ball's X or Y coordinate change every single time we call this method loop. So we can handle all of the game processing right here, and we will say that we will move the object. We're gonna call a method on the ball class that's called move. This method, again, will be called 60 times every second. So what is this method going to do? Well, let's head over to the ball class and create this method. We're going to add one to the X coordinate. So before we run this, let's think again about what this is going to do. 60 times a second, we call loop. Loop will first call ball.move, which is going to add one to the X coordinate. Then it's going to tell Java to repaint which tells the ball to redraw itself at its new X coordinate. One sixtieth of a second later, we're going to call loop again, which is going to tell the ball to move. We're going to add one to the X coordinate. We're going to tell Java, repaint everything, which says to the ball, okay, redraw yourself at your new position, which is now two units to the left, and so on. So if we run this, as you can see, the ball is now moving slowly to the right. X is getting bigger, and of course it goes off the screen. If we want to move the ball to the left, all we have to do is X minus minus. And we could run it, and now 1 60th of a second, it will decrease X by 1, and every 60th of a second it keeps doing that, and it keeps moving to the left. Now if you want to speed this up, you can. Instead of subtracting 1, we can subtract, say, 5. That means that the ball will now move five positions every 60th of a second. So it'll move five times faster, as you can see. I hope you learned something from watching this video. Please remember to subscribe and share this video with others who are learning Java programming. Thanks for watching and take care everyone.